you know, it is Neil and Brian. We are here with you for the very first time on the Shiny Side Up podcast brought to you by Thomas E. Keller Trucking. Neil, how the heck you doing? Doing great, Brian. Happy to be here. Welcome, everybody. Excited about the first show. Pretty, pretty good stuff. So uh, we're going to be doing lots of stuff. We're going to be talking about the industry, giving you some industry updates. Um, We'll have some maybe some special topics here and there that that might might relate directly to us here at Keller Trucking, but maybe relate just more in general to the industry as well. Um, Might even relate to Brian and myself specifically. We we do like to talk about ourselves. We do. We do. So for a lot of you, some of you might know, but a lot of you probably don't know, but Neil is in sales. Right. Yep. Yep. I've uh, been in the sales. I've been here 22 years, almost. If you and he's still younger than I am. And he's I been here that long. I'm proud of that. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, myself, I've been here 13 years. Um, a lot of you guys know me. I'm, I was a driver for, for 10 of those years here at Keller. Um, been in the safety department for a couple of years, and now I'm in operations as a fleet manager for the, for the finishing program. Um, so, um, what you may not know, Neil and I also play in a band together. Um, and we do. little shameless self-promotion here, but we're, we're called Exit 39. Find us on the old Facebook there. Um, Neil and I have known each other for, man, what, it's got to be close to 30 years at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I was 16. Yeah, I, I would have been 18. So, uh, but Neil and I met and played in a band together when we were kids at 16 and 18 and um and uh through killer trucking <laughs> yeah. we, we kind of got brought back together a little bit right yeah, yeah yeah so kids are grown and it's it's possible now so it's a lot of fun yeah yeah so so who knows we might have some some musical tidbits added in here and there as well oh and by the way we should probably tell them the name of this right I don't think we've said oh, that yet, right? Uh, I, we might not have. I, maybe, maybe I forgot to do that in the introduction. Okay. Yeah, so. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shiny side up is what this is. Shiny which side up. I just learned what that meant last week. See, I've been in sales, so that's where we get both sides coming at you here. So yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yes, while you're driving, while you're listening to this glorious podcast we're doing, Make sure to keep the shiny side up. We don't, we don't want the greasy side sticking up. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yeah. All right. So, I don't know. I suppose we might as well talk about some stuff, you think? Yeah. Yeah. So, we do have kind of a industry ideas we're going to bring at you. And, and uh, this week, we're going to talk about the FMCSA is proposing a rule that would loosen up the CDL testing regulations. Uh, there's a couple changes, but... Yeah, and, and mind you, they're proposing. They have proposed a rule. Nothing nothing set in stone by well any said. stretch. It, it's, as, as a lot of you guys know, the FMCSA takes a long time to do just about anything. Um, they take a long time to do bad stuff, and they take even longer to correct bad stuff and do good stuff. So <laughs> Yeah, so, so it's not... not happening just yet or anything it's kind of like you know i i propose a lot of rules and ideas around the house and most of that stuff doesn't happen either so <laughs> that's doesn't even make it through the yeah, public comment I, section <laughs> i may own fmcsa around the house so. <laughs> yes yes absolutely so um but yeah so these proposed rules or these proposed changes to the cdl testing regulations um one of them is having to do with the with people who have a CDL learner's permit. Um, as it stands now, anybody with a learner permit, just like in a car, you have to have a driver with a valid CDL in in the passenger seat in the vehicle with you to operate on the roads. Um, one that's one thing they're thinking about loosening up is making it so that that person who holds a learner's permit doesn't have to have a CDL holder next to them in the passenger seat. That's a little scary. That's a lot scary. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, and I, for the life of me, I can't even fathom where this is coming from. 
Um, and I guess they're saying that if they pass the CDL skills test, they can operate. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so the skills test, you know, for people who like me took the CDL test a million years ago, might not remember that's your, your, uh, you know, backing your 90 degree alley dock, your blind side and sight side, parallel park, straight, uh, straight back. Um, and if you're old like me, back in my day, we had to do a serpentine. They don't even do that anymore. They don't do that. They do not do the serpentine anymore. <laughs> now what now you, you just get an offset back. So you start from the left and back to the right or vice versa, just depending on what the tester wants to do that day. Um, so, but yeah, no, no serpentine. In your training days, would you... Because you trained recently, within the past four years, we'd say. Right? Yeah, yeah, the last five years I was driving, I was I was a driver trainer. Just for fun, would you go old school and say, hey guys, today we're doing a serpentine? <laughs> Never really did, especially if we were, when we were working with people that were, still needed to go take their tests, because we didn't want to get them all clouded up with stuff that gotcha. they didn't need for the test, you know, because, yep, yeah, and, and all of my trainers out there, you guys will agree with me 100%, the CDL school... They teach you how to pass the test. The Keller Finishing Program, we teach you how to be a truck driver. <laughs> so so there that, is a big difference. Oh, no, very big difference. Yeah. Yeah. You are CDL school. You're just being taught how to pass that test. You, you, They don't teach you anything more than what you need to know to do that. So, Well, then that doesn't sound like a very good qualification to me to be able to drive a truck without a licensed driver next to you. I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that the FMCSA was just tripping over themselves to try to strengthen the CDL testing regulations and, and add more things to it that you had to do to get a CDL. I just don't understand what what the purpose of, of this would, would even be. That, that doesn't make much sense. It's got to be something revenue related or getting drivers in the seats. It seems to be the hot topic all the time, but mm -hmm. we got to be safe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's I, I had plenty of trainees who had never even slid tandems until they got to me in the trainer truck. So, you know, a skills test really isn't. That's great that you can do a 90 degree alley dock with two or less pull-ups. <laughs> but I don't know what else that gets you. <laughs> you know, so. Um, but. Um, so, yeah, you got that there. And uh have to see what happens. But I can't imagine that something like yeah. that would be. Yeah, I don't. Of, of these three things they're talking about, I'd say that one's got the least chance of passing. Um, I've had enough. I've had a few high school drivers just in right, the four-wheelers. And, uh, yeah, as much as I don't want to be sitting in that car with them. I really do need to be in that car with them, but uh, uh, yeah, for sure. I've contemplated wearing a motorcycle helmet at the same time, but <laughs> so far I've not had to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the other things they are kicking around is so currently for a CDL, you have to take a CDL test in the state that you live in. Um, this was something, well, you know, you kind of remember, um, before the whole COVID debacle when we had our own driving school here at Keller, um, that was one thing we had to deal with quite a bit. We would have guys from other states who would come and do their CDL school with us, but then we would have to take them back to their home state to take their test. Because even though the CDL is a federal license, they're all done at the state level. Um, so um, I can remember you know, I kind of became the de facto Pennsylvania guy. Anytime we had somebody that needed to go take a CDL test in Pennsylvania, they went with me and we'd find a place out there to, to get them tested. You know, um, I same test, right? Yeah, there, there's some, for the most part, they're fairly similar. There are some differences. Um, and most of those would, would be certain, certain requirements or how the test was actually given. Um, you know, for example, in the state of Ohio, for the pre-trip inspection test, you have a time limit of 30 minutes. In the state of Pennsylvania, you don't have that time limit. But they put a limit on the entire test. The entire test has to be done within three hours. So you just want to, you don't want to take too long on any one given section. But, uh, but Ohio, 
limits it to you have to do the pre-trip inspection in less than 30 minutes. It's kind of like a pizza delivery. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, there are there are some differences there. Um, this one I kind of like. Um, if you can take a test in a state and your home state will recognize that test and still issue you that CDL, I think that's a good thing. That helps... It just makes it easier for the person who is trying to acquire the CDL. And typically, you're running state to state. You're going to be all over the country anyway, so... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That that one makes sense. So, number one, learner's permit holders, bad, will take a long time for the FMCSA to decide not to do it. Great. CDL applicants testing in other states, good. FMCSA will take much longer to get that done. <laughs> Which brings us to our number three. Let's see what this is. Eliminate the requirement to wait 14 days after being issued a permit to take the CDL skills test. I don't know. Does that... uh, What do you think, Brian? (laughs) Honestly, having that waiting period, I always thought was kind of silly. They... uh, they, Some states even make you wait X amount of time if if you fail the test. They'll make you wait seven days or ten days or something like that before you can go and take the test again. Um, you know, to me, when you're learning something brand new, and now all of a sudden you got to go two weeks before you can take the test on it. Yeah, you know, I mean, think about it. Back in high school, when you first got into algebra, if you learned, you know, the first three chapters of your algebra one book. And then you had to not think about it and wait two weeks to take your first algebra test. I don't think I would have done very good. <laughs> so, uh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. And it's almost like they're, okay, so you want to be a truck driver. So, here you go. I come back in two weeks to make sure you really want to be a truck driver, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's not like we're buying firearms here. Let's, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. And in the 14 days, unless you're you're, you're going through a program where you're a uh, driving school, you're, there's just nothing. You're not doing anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, well, and then, and you, you're not operating a vehicle. You don't. I mean, you got your learner's permit, so maybe, I guess, if you got a buddy who's willing to let you drive his truck around on the weekend while he's off or something, and he's willing to spend the time to go drive around with you. But, yeah, for the most part, that, that seems like it, to me, that seems like it's it's a no-brainer. Just, yeah, if I, if I finish up driving school on Friday, let me take the test on Monday. You know, why not? Why not? I agree. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. So those sure. are the changes they're talking about. So the, the the permit holder not having to have a licensed driver with them. I both think that's kind of a silly thing to do. And then the other two were okay with taking in other states and maybe eliminate the 14 day waiting period before you can take the skills test. Yeah. Yeah. And again, proposed. It's it's not even a. Yeah, they, they, they would have a whole bunch of stuff to do yet before this would were to, if they do make any of these changes for them to take any kind of effect. So, um, you know, and like I say, the FMCSA is not the fastest moving agency in the world by any stretch. So, so stay tuned, folks. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep you posted. And, um, you know, if you want to check out some of these things, I know um, Freight Waves. I, you know, I follow Freight Waves on Facebook. They always got pretty good industry news stories. Um, but so they've been talking a lot about these. Um, you know, you can look into, you can check out uh, the American Trucking Association. They, from what I understand, they are the ones that are kind of pushing for this. And then on the other side, you got OIDA, the OID, OOIDA. There we go. Easier said than done. Um, the Owner Operators Independent Drivers Association. Um, um, you can check out those, you know, those websites to get both sides of the story. Always good to get both sides of the story. You know, maybe, maybe the ATA has something to say about it that'll make you think, but maybe all I don't make you think. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So industry, we got, uh, one of the topics we wanted to talk about is it's probably obvious to, to everybody out there is just the, the, the freight market and, uh, 
what we're seeing happening and and uh you know the issues i'm sure you guys all notice it out there the road uh just things have slowed down things have been slow and it's been down for you know this whole whole year and and a lot of last year uh but the thing is a full trucking market cycle typically is three to four years and we've seen these go again and again uh over time and and this one was just just big and I, I think if you look back to why and how we got here with the pandemic service industries aren't working and everything that is moving everything that people are doing there at home they're gonna fix up their houses they're gonna buy stuff and everything moves in a truck so the trucking industry was really high up there for a while uh, beyond the other industries and uh, you know the bigger they are yeah, the harder they fall yeah, absolutely. so the correction is worse than we've I've experienced at least yeah and and you know I've, I've been in trucking for for 30 years and yeah there's always the ups and the downs and and uh this one definitely seems to be hanging on a little longer than normal i mean even even the recession back in 08 and 09 you know um that was that was a solid two years of really rough you know times at it and and uh you know just from a from a driver's standpoint i mean i uh i just worked my way through it you know and and, and that's one thing that uh i just always i would always tell my wife well the, the more i'm willing to work the the less the recession affects me <laughs> you know um but uh so it, it was it was just one of those things you know the 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 days of us picking and choosing the freight and and uh are just not here right now mm-hmm. you know so um it, it's it's a bummer and, and i deal with it you know with from the fleet manager side all the time because they're you know everybody's mad at us because we're not well yeah i'm not getting my miles i'm not getting my miles and trust me we know we know and and I especially know because I've been in that in that seat before, where the miles just aren't there, um, you know. But uh, they're it, coming back though. It, it'll come back. It always comes back around. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. on the sales side. We're starting to see things. Uh, I, I wouldn't say they're really turning much yet, but it's it's stabilized and, and you see some fluctuations and and things. We feel like it's going to be pretty flat the rest of this year, but moving forward. Uh, you know, we're going to start to see some change towards the tail end and, and uh, things will kind of right size themselves a little bit. A lot of this has to do with the, the rates. Uh, during the pandemic, the rates went way up. You just had something you've never seen before where certain people were getting out of the industry. A lot of people got into the industry and under a false pretense of what it really is like. And uh, it takes takes quite a while for those guys to kind of exit the industry. Uh, well, that, that's one thing I've, I've read, I've seen in articles quite a bit, and and heard, you know, people you know talking and giving speeches and whatnot. Is just this time around, one of the big things is is we just don't have the trucks leaving the industry in a downturn like we normally would have. And that that's why it's taking so long for things to turn around because mm-hmm. the, there's tons of capacity out there and and just and I mean anybody can get a load of whatever hauled for just about whatever price they want at this point you know because if if Keller trucking ain't willing to do it at this price point well Joe blows trucking over there sure will you know and in past downturns, Joe Blow's trucking would have went out of business, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and, and but that, that's where I hear a lot of is, is just the, the capacity is staying where it's at. And, and it's just one of those weird things where any other time, sure I understand. oh, my watch is talking to me right in the middle of a yeah. podcast. That is phenomenal. I'm going to take that off next time. <laughs> first podcast we're still working out some of the some of the kinks yet so you know you have to forgive siri she got a little excited she want to talk to <laughs> yeah um but anyways like i was saying it, it, i've seen that a lot in different reports and stuff that uh 
yeah, the the smaller, you know, you, you hate to see anybody not succeed at a business, but, you know, that's in, in the business world, some things have to die for other things to grow, you know, so. Supply and demand, yeah. Yep. So. So we think we're we're headed. It feels like we're headed out of it, but um, you know, it, it, and the whole situation. People, uh, I think, were pent up in their houses for so long that when things did open up, guess what? They use less stuff that mm-hmm. trucks haul. Like, let's go on vacation, right? Let's go travel. Let's do all these things we couldn't do. Let's go out yeah. to eat, and yeah. so doing stuff as opposed yeah. to buying things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. That made it feel a little bit worse as well. Um, well, I, I think too. You know, um, just speaking of the pandemic and all that stuff, that, that that we like to think that we're oh, okay, the world's back to normal. But that's, the world's completely different. I mean, the pandemic changed everything, and just like you're saying, it changed the way people spend money and what people do, what people buy, and and that. It, it just gonna take a while for the economy to adjust to that. Yep, yep. And there's some research out there that kind of explains this in a four stage cycle. Um, so cycle bottoming is kind of where we're at. Low demand, shippers control pricing, and that is really true right now because mm-hmm. you know we fight for everything we can get, and uh, you just hope you have a good enough relationship with your shippers that uh, you always got to be competitive um, but hopefully they can work with you to help keep you moving understanding nobody wants their partners to go out of business so uh, just trying to work together as much as we can but on the flip side those guys they really had their butts handed to them during the the pandemic because the prices went up so high they were failing at their goals on all fronts of controlling their freight spend Uh, but I think everybody understands that, including their leadership. So, um, but the early cycle, um, rates start going up, equipment orders rise, things start to tighten back up. Uh, and, and this is kind of what we went through in the past. Uh, and if you have anything any to add, Brian, just kick in here. But <laughs> mid cycle, um, Freight demand continues to grow, margins are up, rates are high. And this was during the the COVID pandemic. That's something we saw. Uh, and like we were talking about, we saw it beyond anything we've I've experienced in my tenure in the industry. So it, it was it was incredible. Which also means the late cycle. Yeah. Rates fall and demand slows and it hit hard. So and and every and, and it, you know, economies. It doesn't matter whether it's the U.S. or whatever country in the world. Economies are they're cyclical. That this cycle is just continuous. You know, the the you know each individual cycle might last a little bit longer or a little bit shorter than the last one or the next one or whatever. But but it all does keep going. And that's um, you know from a driver standpoint. You know, I learned early on, man, in truck driving, you got to make hay while the sun shining. You know, um, I used to get so all kinds of upset because I wasn't getting getting miles on, on this week or that week. And but then you got to remember, at some point, man, it's going to break loose, and you're not going to be able to get a break if, even if you want one. So, you know, sometimes, you know, it's it's kind of good to to enjoy the slowness because <laughs> at, at some point it ain't going to be slow no more. <laughs> right. right. You know, so, um, but that was the one thing I always tried to keep in mind, but yeah, it's, you know, the, you know, talking about the, the early cycle, which we're, we're hoping to see, you know, start to fire up later towards the end of this year, um, with the rates starting to go up and, and, uh, you know, things starting to starting to tighten back up, you know, meaning capacity. That's when you, where you, you just got more things that need to be shipped than you have trucks to ship right. it on. Right. And that's really one of the biggest issues right now is, is the capacity thing is just, there's, like I said earlier, there's trucks everywhere. Um, you, you just, you can't turn around without tripping over a pile of trucks right now. Mm-hmm. So. And, and the good thing about Keller is we're, we're 
we're strong financially and we're well diversified. So uh, it seems you know, when we run into these times, you know, maybe it's it's we lean on the warehousing side a little more, and we've got different divisions, the commercial real estate side, mm-hmm. uh, that can help keep us going, and that's uh, and that really really helps out when it comes. If you're waiting for trucking companies to go out of business, we're waiting um, as well, and we but we are in a good right good position to weather those well storms. And I, I do i get that question those types of questions from drivers from time to time too it's like well, why are we still hiring if i can't get any miles if, if i'm not getting miles and none of the drivers we have are getting miles and why are we still hiring you know are are we you know and and i, I think what you just said there it just goes a long way towards you know make, hopefully making some people feel better about things it's like yeah we're good <laughs> it's just it, it's not you know we're not we're not living on prime real estate we're we're just in a nice house right now right right <laughs> if that makes sense uh, so we're just just keeping it cool right now we're just keeping just it out. cool right we're just we're keeping a nice steady beat and we're just cruising yeah 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 exactly yeah. so for for those of you who don't know, Neil's a drummer, so he's always keeping the nice steady beat for us. <laughs> yes, that is that is my role. Yes, so. yes. yes. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think we can probably wrap it up here um, for this first one. I think it went pretty decent. Yeah. Oh, by the way, before we do go, we got to introduce the our our producer. Every good show has a great producer. Otherwise, it's not a good show. So, Lindsay Keller is our producer. Lindsay, would you like to say hi? Hello. There she is. So, she's over hi, there Lindsay. running the board and and making everything happen and doing all the stuff that I know I'm not smart enough to do. So, <laughs> thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. So, because she's got a lot of work right now. To yeah, yeah. This Neil, Neil too, and I so. get to go back to to our regular day and do what we would normally do. Lindsay's got to go piece all this together, and she's got to do the hard work. We're we're the talent. We just sit here and look pretty and talk, and Lindsay does all the grunt work. <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't forget to uh, the next time you're in here at the new building and. Hopefully, I don't know how, you know, we've, we've had some drivers make it over. Do know you can get a truck in the parking lot, um, bobtail or with a trailer. You can you can make it happen. Make sure you come over and check us out. Um, say hi to us. We'll give you a tour of the building. It's it's, it's pretty nice. And um, so we're, uh, yeah, hope to see you guys live and in person at some point when you get a chance to get through. Yeah, come on by. And maybe in a few months, maybe those with learner's permits, be able to drive themselves over too. I doubt it. I doubt it. So, yes, perhaps. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we will wrap it up for the uh, first edition of. I almost said sunny side up. It's shiny side up. We're not talking about eggs. We're talking about trucking. So, yep. shiny side up. I'm going to practice that before the next, next next one. So, all right. So, drivers, everybody, be safe out there and. Keep the shiny side up.